this plant is so amazing for the skin. <laughs> I think it gets like overseen a little bit for like rashes, for bug bites, for swelling, for eyes. Camille is like a perfect, perfect remedy topically. Hello and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. I am so happy to bring you this conversation with one of my favorite people about one of my favorite plants. Leslie and I have been herbal friends for many years now, and I found her to be one of the most heart-centered, generous, and deeply devoted herbalists that I know. For those of you who don't know Leslie, she is the founder and director of Wild Root Botanicals, a bioregionally based herbal school located on the unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples. The mission for the school is to foster a learning environment where people develop personal connections with plants through wild crafting, tending to the land, and working towards right relations. She also has an herbal product line and is known in her region for distilling hydrosols and for her rewilding project, a monthly offering of wild crafted and farm grown herbs to support mental wellness, nutrition, and connection with the land. In addition to herbal work, she is a doula, childbirth educator, and prenatal yoga instructor for the past 20 years. She is co-author of the book, Yoga for Pregnancy, and is a certified Iyengar yoga teacher and the mother of two sons. Her favorite part about teaching is when she is able to witness students feel a familiar spark within them when they engage with plants, a reuniting with the basic human skill that was a necessity for all our ancestors somewhere down the line in all of our lineages. Welcome to the podcast, Leslie. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh. It's so fun to have everyone on the podcast. Honestly, like I love all my guests, but when I have a good friend on the podcast, it feels like, I don't know, it's just really fun to have like a hangout time where we like get to share things, but with an audience. Yeah. I super appreciate it. It's really fun. Oh yeah. Rosalie. Oh, I'm so excited. And uh, you did choose an herb that like on a given day, if you like really twisted my arm to say a favorite herb, this one might be it. But before we get to our herb, I want to hear about your path and and what brought you here today. Yeah. So I was reflecting on this um, and I was thinking back to, so I grew up in Seattle. I grew up in North Seattle, um, which I think people are sometimes surprised by because I really don't feel like a city person at all. But I did. I grew up in Seattle and my mom was a gardener and had this, you know, it was a small garden, like a city lot garden. Um, and my sister and I, we would spend so much time out there in the garden. We, we must've been out there like most of the time, especially in the summer. And I just was like remembering like all these plants that she grew that I developed relationships with and didn't even realize as a child, like we just Mm -hmm. incorporated them into our playing. Um, she was a baker and she had a bakery and we would make these mud pies and she had lemon balm in her garden and we'd decorate it with lemon balm because we loved how it smelled. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was like, there was this little patch of raspberries and my sister and I would just hide in there and eat them. And like raspberry became like a really favorite plant of mine. Just like my sister and I both, like we just connect over raspberries all the time. My mom actually bought me raspberry sheets when I moved to college, <laughs> they had, like <laughs> raspberries on them. Cause I love them so much. And, um, there are other plants too. Like there's this holly tree and we had this ritual And it seems so simple, but like just reflecting on it, I realized like how meaningful it was. We'd go out there every Christmas and like harvest the branches that had the berries on them and we'd decorate the mantle. And every year my mom would tell me that she almost named me Holly because my birthday is on Christmas Eve. 
And um, it was just like really woven into my childhood. Like, I think those plants really like gave me solace. Like, you know, there were some hard things in my childhood and those plants were just like really there for me and they brought me a lot of joy. Mm -hmm. um, my great grandparent, I was really lucky because I had five generations alive when I was a kid. Wow. I feel super lucky for that. And my great grandparents were alive till, I, well, my great, great grandmother, she was alive till I was 20. So I had a really close relationship with them. And mm -hmm. um, they also lived in Seattle. And my grandpa, he had this amazing garden. And again, it's mm -hmm. just a small city lot. Um, he was German and she was full blood Irish. And he had, he made all of these, they're very, both very artistic. And he made all these little churches, like little tiny, like halfway up my shin size churches <laughs> and like little houses. And he ran electricity to them. Wow. And so like in his garden, he had this little waterfall and he had all these little houses um, amongst all of his plants. And he had little gnomes and mm -hmm. they had like little painted deer. It was just like, it was just such a fun place to run around. Um, they had like this dilapidated shed that the raccoons would live in. We weren't allowed to go in there because the raccoons were like, it's their house. But anyways, I just reflect on that and I'm like, man, like the plants really were a huge part of my upbringing, hmm. even though it was in sort of a small way, not a direct like herbal way, but they really did. And, um, I moved to college and, um, I remember being at this bookstore with my mom and there was like this clearance table and it had David Hoffman's um, complete illustrated herbal book on it. And I really wanted it. And she was like, well, I'll buy it for you. But you have to promise me you're going to read it. And I was like, mm -hmm. I, I promise, I promise. And I like poured over those pages. I had like everything memorized. I knew what every plant looked like. And that really set me off on my path. Hmm. That and, um, about that same time when I moved to college, I met my adopted dad and um, I learned a lot about, a, I've learned about a lot of things from him. He's an indigenous man. And I was, he taught me a lot about just, uh, just relating to the land and mm -hmm. about plant wisdom and really about just like being who I am, you know, like just how to stand in the world in a good way. And we took this trip to Montana where he's, he's from. And, um, we went to visit this place called the Buffalo field campaign. Um, it was like this advocacy group for, um, just helping like wild Buffalo, but we picked all this sage. I had a VW bus at the time and we filled this bus from literally the back seat to the front seat from the floor to the ceiling, this, this sage plant that he was using in some ceremony he was doing. And I remember him talking about how the sage was working on us. And I was like, mm -hmm. Man, I like get what that means because that sage was so strong and we were driving so slow in that Vita bus. Hmm. But yeah, I just learned a really different perspective from him that really has carried through and uh, really made me who I am. Hmm. So those shaped me. And then I developed my business and my school and all that from, from all of that foundation, I think. And you did you start making hydrosols pretty early on? I did, yeah. So um I did a, like a BA, I designed my own major with herbalism and somatics. And then like, right when I graduated, I was like, I don't know what to do and met my ex-husband at the time. And he was a chem, like a chemist and we started distilling plants and I just fell in love. I fell in love with distilling at that time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was pretty soon after I graduated. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, like 2004. It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. That reminds me, we have to share how we met because I, I, yeah. like, I don't always have like the best, like, here's how I met this person, but this is like one of the best ones, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad that I have one of the best yeah, ones. Let's see, let's see what, like if we can, what is like fact and what is like become legend in our okay. mind. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> but what I remember is I was here in the Metau Valley. I don't remember when it was well over a decade. We hadn't lived here long. So I was pregnant with Salish, my younger son. So I was. 10 was years like ago years, oh 10, 10 years ago he's okay. 10 yeah. okay so 10 years ago that's a nice nothing like pregnancy and children <laughs> it really helps yeah. <laughs> yeah so I was out on one of my favorite walks here in the Metau it's not like a grandiose walk but in the springtime it's filled with wildflowers and this was the spring 
and I was out there and I remember you and obviously on the trail, but I can't like now I remember you asked me like about a plant. You're like, is this lomatium or yes, something? Yes. You asked about a lomatium plant. Uh-huh. And I was like, why? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for asking me. I know all the plants. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But somehow uh-huh. maybe you knew me or something. Yeah. Like I, I don't know how I, I was like, I think that's Rosalie. <laughs> Like, I think maybe through Herb Mentor or something, I had known your face. I think maybe that was what it was. And I was, I was out there literally trying to identify Lomatium because I hadn't seen it growing in the wild before. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think you were, I think you stopped with your husband and you were like looking at a plant or something. And probably I do that a lot. (laughs) That makes sense. And I was like, huh, I think I'm going to ask these guys. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's how I, that's how we met, but it was just a com- passing conversation, right? We just kind of, it was on. really brief. Yeah. You like told me, yes, this is Lamisham. And I felt confident that you knew, I think yeah. I asked you if you were Rosalie and you were like, yes. And I was like, yeah, I met Rosalie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, then I don't, then I feel like in my mind, I was like, we met and then we were like good friends, but there's probably some in between, yeah. but I don't remember. I know. You, I think you came to my retreat when I did, I did. in 2014. So that's probably yeah. when I really got to hang, hang out with you. And then you host classes in Bellingham and I've mm-hmm. gone there, especially when Jim is teaching. So yeah. the McDonald's. Yeah. So I've got to spend more time with you there. So, and then, mm-hmm. you know, you just meet people in life where you just know like, oh, we're exactly. friends. Exactly. You're meant to like be. that with plants too. I feel like you're like, oh yes, yes so this true. is the one I need. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Well, speaking of plants, I'm curious why you chose chamomile for today. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was hard for me to choose a plant. I I do know. (laughs) You chose another. I went back and forth. It's like, it's so hard because I feel like I, when I'm teaching, it's like, this is my favorite plant. Then I'm like, actually I have like 30 favorite plants, but (laughs) pretty much. I chose chamomile because I, I'm growing this little patch this year in my garden. Mm. And it's just been really amazing. Like I've grown it before, but for some reason this year in particular, I'm just like really immersing myself in chamomile. And it's been a really busy summer. And to go out there and tend to it, like every five days I go out and pick all the flowers so Mm -hmm. it doesn't go to seed. So it will keep going. And I think I have maybe 15 plants, but I think I've gathered like several pounds already just from you know it's still going but it's really remarkable and I've been using a lot of chamomile just in my daily life and one thing that I think is really kind of fun is like just the act of picking them like it's this little tiny plant right it's only like a foot and a half or maybe two feet tall and the flowers like grow embedded in the plant like it's not like calendula where they're on top of the plant it's easy to pick them all real quick but it takes a lot of like slowing down to actually like pick the little chamomile out. Yeah. yeah. And it's just really fun because I'm like, man, this is exactly the gift of chamomile. Like I have mm-hmm. to like slow down and take my time. And then I'm like sitting there with the smell, like that apple like smell mm-hmm. of the chamomile. And it's just it's like the sage, like it's just like working on me. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, like I was really busy and this was a to do. And now I'm out here and I'm actually enjoying this and just feeling that gratitude really for that slowness. Oh, I love that. I'm, I have mm-hmm. a chamomile patch this year too, so I can really relate. And mm-hmm. I will also admit that sometimes I get a little impatient with the chamomile yeah. harvest of it and I'll like <laughs> use my fingers as a rake. Yes. Like pop them off, but it's oh, yeah. not quite as like fulfilling and it's not as great of a harvest as like taking the time. Yeah. I've also even bought a chamomile rake. And mm-hmm. if I have an especially large patch, I will use the chamomile rake. Yes. Yeah, totally. I have a friend that has a farm out here. We went out there with my apprenticeship class this year. And she has, like, a lot of chamomile. She's growing, like, huge rows, multiple huge rows. I don't know how many feet they are, but, I mean, it takes you hour or not hours. It takes you, like, five minutes to walk down the row. So it's, you know, a decent size. And she had the rake and the hands. But I don't feel like it's that much faster with the rake, honestly. Like, I was disappointed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Something a little faster would be nice. But. 
You still have to be really gentle with the rake because you, you can't have to just, be so you have to, like, gentle. You have to hold the plant down because if you just rake it, you'd pull up the whole plant. So. Exactly. Yeah, you kind of like hold your hand on the, the side of the rake as you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then you miss a bunch. So yeah. you have to go through with your hands anyways if you want to get them all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, chamomile. <laughs> yeah, totally. One thing I really love about chamomile growing in my garden too is how many pollinators it attracts so of all different kinds right now i have lots of skippers in my garden and so there's just oh. skippers all over it they were just so cute i don't know what skippers are actually they're kind of i don't really technically know what they are either but they're kind of moth like like kind of a size oh. of moth kind of like a i don't know somebody out there knows what a skipper is and they're probably rolling their eyes right now but i think of it it's like a cross between a moth and a butterfly like mm. it's butterfly-esque but smaller and they have yeah. this like really long probus that goes ah you know, on the the plant or the flower for a while. But yeah, we have like thousands of them in our garden right now. I asked my husband the other day, what's your favorite thing about the garden? And I was like expecting him to say like the dahlias or, you know, the chamomile or something. And he was like, the skippers. <laughs> nice. oh, that's cool. <laughs> oh, I got to come out there and see your skippers. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, we so I've been drinking like fresh chamomile tea and I actually think mm -hmm. about you a lot when I'm doing herbs in a French press because I remember one time I was like, skull cap doesn't really work for me. And you're like, well, what quantity are you using? <laughs> like, and I was just using like a little bit in a French press and you packed it full. And like, I felt, I felt skull cap at that moment. I was like, <laughs> okay, I wasn't using the right quantity. But I think about that. So I've been doing chamomile tea in the evening. And my goodness, like it really works. Like it works so well. Like I think people think chamomile is so basic, you know, I mean, and also like, well, let me stay on that topic and I'll go back, but we've been making it in the evening and it not only makes me sleepy, but I feel like it makes me sleep deeper. Like I wake mm -hmm. up feeling so much more rested, even if I didn't get a full eight hours, like I feel like invigorated, which mm -hmm. I don't like, that's something that I don't feel all the time. So it's been really fun having this like really good quality chamomile, this fresh chamomile to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, chamomile is so amazing because it's an herb that like everybody knows really. Like even people that don't know anything about plants that like will know. Like you could buy chamomile tea bags that are probably a 7-Eleven or something, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. But I think people are used to qual not that great quality of chamomile. And so when you get really good cha chamomile, like the effects of it are so different than mm -hmm. you know, just like shredded old material. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I Do you know, you probably know Ashala Farms in Southern Oregon. I keep hearing of them, but you know, I haven't they're visited amazing. It or anything like that. Their camel looks like it should when you buy it. Like it is absolutely, mm -hmm. they sell out every year. So you have to like get it early, but it looks just like how I pick it for hand with my mm. hands in my garden it looks perfect so they have oh, good quality nice. yeah yeah but I think that's one of the reasons I love chamomile so much is because I personally dismissed it for so long not even uh, out of knowledge but just out of like oh you know that's what Peter Rabbit drinks it's yeah you know, just it's just chamomile totally and, but once I started working with it and especially in those larger quantities I like really impressed me not yeah. that it always needs to be taken in larger quantities because it can be kind of intense when you do that it's just a time and a place for everything but mm -hmm. yeah I think about something that Jim talks about or he said in workshops when he's here Jim McDonald is our friend but he always says and I hope I'm quoting him correctly but he says like gentle is not like gentle is still is powerful like gentle does not mean weak I think that's what he says that's, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah gentle does not mean weak and I think Camille is like the perfect example of that like Chamomile is so powerful and really like, I feel like that's the medicine that our larger culture needs is this gentle medicine. Like we have so many driving forces, you know, everybody's so amped up and moving so fast, like something to slow us down and get in our bodies and just like feel, feel our way through, you know, mm -hmm. bodied, I think is really important medicine these days. Mm -hmm. And you're doing fresh tea, fresh flower tea. Thank you. Fresh tea. I mean, I love dried when I don't have access to fresh, but yeah, I've been working with the fresh. And are you using hot water or cool water or both? Hot water. Yeah. yeah. I've been, yeah, just doing hot water and then just putting it in the French press. 
I am not someone that measures very often. It's more of how I see it. So I mm-hmm. like fill the bottom, you know, with like a couple layers of flour and pour hot water over it. And the thing that's so awesome about chamomile too is that it changes flavor if you let it steep longer. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's chamomile is really quite amazing like that. Like, you know, it's really sweet if you let it brew for a little bit. And then if you let it sit longer than like five minutes, it gets really bitter. So you get more of those digestive properties with um, with the longer steep. Yeah. Another thing I want to say about chamomile that just kind of surprises me is how, like, being a distiller, like, when I distill that plant, like, cobalt blue oil comes out mm. of the plant. Like, I mean, it's so surprising. Like, yarrow does that, too. But, you know, the plant is white and yellow. And then this, like, super bright yellow, uh, excuse me bright blue comes out as you distill it and Mm -hmm. it's kind of full of surprises a little bit that plant Mm -hmm. it is full of surprises I like that but it truly is it is yeah Mm -hmm. when I have access to the fresh I love to do the fresh plant the fresh flowers in cool water oh nice it's not as you know potent like it's not a sedative or anything but it that's strong but it the just the aromatics come out in such like a crisp mm. beautiful way that it really mm-hmm. captures that chamomile smell within the taste yeah so. it's like apples yeah, yeah. like yeah. the spanish word for chamomile is manzanilla like manzana like apples i really mm-hmm. love that because it does mm-hmm. it smells a little bit like apples yeah yeah it does mm-hmm. what other ways do you like to work with chamomile yeah um Mention the tea, the hydrosol. Yeah. So, um, so one thing that I think about it kind of, I like talking about plants and kind of story or like thinking of them in that kind of way. I don't know. It just, it brings them alive in a way that's just not like lists of actions, but like it, so matricaria, the genus name actually comes from a, the Latin root matrix, which means womb. And so there's a couple of things I like thinking about that, like when it points to just like people with a uterus, like cycles, and it's an antispasmodic, so it helps us when we have cramping in our body. And that's one place that, you know, people get cramping often is with menstrual cramps, but any cramping really is helpful. But I like thinking about it kind of like in this like kind of motherly sense, like we talked, you mentioned Peter Rabbit, like, you know, Peter Rabbit went through a garden and was eating all this stuff and then like hid in a water can and probably super cold. And then he's terrified because he's like running for his life for Mr. McGregor and lost his clothes. I mean, that was a stressful day. <laughs> his mom, you know, his yeah. mom put him to sleep with chamomile. Like, you know, like, so yeah, it's helpful for like digestive stuff. Like, you know, especially when emotions have been evol- involved in like why we have stomach upset like we felt like really upset or scared or any kind of you know strong emotion that affects our digestion chamomile really shines matthew wood has this really great quote in one of his books um that it's for babies of any age (laughs) and i love it so much because i think there's all you know i think all of us have moments of feeling like a baby (laughs) Mm -hmm. but just like irritated or you know, like inconsolable, like chamomile is the answer. Like it just helps bring us back. It's like that kind of mother that like helps us like settle mm-hmm. in. Um, so I've used it with my kids when they were tiny and teething. Like mm-hmm. I've used it making a strong tea and then putting it on a washcloth and freezing it. And then they can like chew on the frozen mm-hmm. chamomile tea. That was like a godsend to us for a while. And for like colic, when babies are just crying, I work uh, with a lot of babies. I am a doula, so I that's something that I recommend often. And then skin issues, like this plant is so amazing for the skin. <laughs> yeah. I think it gets like overseen a little bit, but for like rashes, for bug bites, for swelling, for eyes, when the eyes are swollen, chamomile is like a perfect perfect remedy topically. I mean, you, if you have a chamomile tea bag, you can like use the tea bag to like, you know, treat your skin and drink the chamomile tea. I think that's <laughs> so fun. I, I love multi-use. <laughs> yeah. I have a, a good story about the chamomile tea bag. Yeah. I was teaching at my first herb conference down in New Mexico 
and I woke up the morning of my first class ever and I had conjunctivitis, like you know, oh, probably no. picked it up on the plane on the way down or something. So it's like, you know, opened up my eye and it's like red and crusty and oh. goopy and just gross. And I'm already nervous, you know? <laughs> and so, but I had my little like herbal first aid kit with me and I had chamomile tea bags in there. <laughs> so I, you know, did I dunked them in some warm water and let them kind of do their thing and then put it on my eye and by the time I taught, I had no redness and it was right. like great. That was, I was so grateful. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I was like, it was one of those moments where I'm like, what do people do without herbs, you know? Yes. Like, like, because we were in, you know, the middle of nowhere, there was no like pharmacy around the corner, you know, we're at this like conference space and yeah. but chamomile was all, all I needed. Chamomile is just so versatile. Like I was just looking up, uh, one of my friends is German and she was telling me the name in German, which I can't pronounce. <laughs> um, but it translates as that it's good for everything. Mm. I love yeah, that. I think that sums it up pretty well. Uh-huh, it is. It is really good for everything. You mentioned for the skin, which I agree that it's overlooked for the skin. Yeah. Uh, it's, such, it's really great at modulating inflammation. So for mm. inflammatory stuff internally, externally. One thing that I've just started to do in the past couple of years is infuse it into oil, especially my homegrown stuff. It just creates this incredible oil um, that the smell is just so lovely. And I like to put a couple drops of essential oil in there too, of chamomile essential oil. It's like one or two drops in a large batch, you know, it's not Mm -hmm. a lot, but just gives it that like wonderful, wonderful scent. And I started giving it to my friends who have kids and my, one of my good friends, also named Leslie, uh, she's been rubbing it on her daughter. And that's like their nighttime ritual. They call it rosy oil, which is so cute. Oh, but, sweet, <laughs> so they, they take the rosy oil, it. which is chamomile oil. And they, you know, she puts it on her feet and on her belly before she goes to sleep. So that's a little nighttime ritual. And I just love that. But it is such a, like, even in that, it's not like they're using it for a skin issue, but it's more just like a nighttime, like mm-hmm. this is us relaxing and getting ready to, to bed with our chamomile oil. Totally. Yeah. I have a lotion that I like making with rose and chamomile. It's kind of same thing. Just like, I mean, I feel like it's great for my skin and, but yeah, it really is relaxing. Mm. Yay, chamomile. Yeah. Yay, chamomile. <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to share about chamomile? Uh, what else would I like to share? I The thing I think, or just the thing that hasn't been spoken or one of many, I'm sure, but is that chamomile is like really excellent, like cumulatively. So it might help us get a good night's sleep or it might help us with a stomach ache, but like taking it for a longer period of time for, you know, kind of chronic stress or for, you know, st- chronic stomach issues or for difficult skin conditions over a longer period of time, really you see more effect. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's great in the moment, but then you get even more effect mm. from taking it long term yeah that's yeah, a good friend to keep around for a while it's a good friend i agree <laughs> yes well thanks for sharing so much about chamomile before we move on though we have to talk about your beautiful recipe chamomile cardamom bitters so yes tell us about this recipe yeah so it just combines cardamom and um, chamomile you just soak it in alcohol like you'd make a tincture and then let it sit for like, you know, a month or so and strain it out. And I like to add just a little bit of maple syrup to my bitters. Mm. Actually, like Rebecca Altman, she makes such fabulous bitters that I know is a really good friend of yours, too. Um, but she kind of got me into that of putting a little bit of maple syrup with them. So you can kind of do it to taste, but excellent in the evening for like if there's you know, just you need to get your digestion ready for eating or after eating. If you feel like a little bit bloated or you haven't eaten, um, you know, you're having indigestion or something like that. Bitters are really excellent. I really love bitters. Like actually this recipe really helped me last year um, for my birthday. Someone bought me like grilled me chicken and it was like not, I, I don't, I haven't gotten food poisoning very often, but um, I did not feel well and it lasted for a while. And those chamomile bitters actually got me through, like mm. they really brought my digestion back. So oh, good. Yes. It's nice to know. It's like not only tastes good, but you can really rely on it too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. totally. Mm-hmm. 
Well, thank you so much for sharing that recipe for us and for the listeners. If you'd like to download your free handout, then you can visit the show notes at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com. Well, I love that your school is so bioregional, and I also deeply love your hydrosols. I'm a big fan of your hydrosols, and actually your whole, all of your products you make are so wonderful, your creams, all of it. Um, I'm curious, you know, what, what are you working on right now? What's your school? Yeah. What are you up to? Yeah, so um, we're offering like several like nine month programs from spring to, to fall um, mm. and also some just like one day classes or weekend classes. But what I'm really excited about is this new project that I'm working on, which is called Nourished by the Wild. Um, mm. It kind of came out from COVID when people we couldn't gather in groups and I still wanted to have like the mission of helping people with plants. So I started this kind of wild crafted collection of plants that I was well, I was at the time I was well doing it every single month. And now this program or this new um, rendition of the project is just seasonally, but it's really fun. Like, so the whole premise of it is mental wellness and nutrition and connection to the land through these herbal medicines. So it's like kind of like an herbal CSA. It's been super fun. Like, just seeing what's available like on the land that I live and Mm -hmm. kind of thinking about like what it would be like if we didn't have a grocery store, you know, or just like at least trying to kind of remember that or like keep it alive. Um, Keep that wisdom alive of like, man, if I didn't have a place to like get vegetables, these rose hips would be so valuable and like making a jam out of them or, you know, like how can I preserve them and get, nutrition from the land it's been super fun even especially in this the winter like that has been Mm -hmm. fun to utilize things like you know douglas fir tips and making i made a jelly out of that or you know it's it's just it's fun i made bitters from them too yeah they are really fun what you put together is very creative and tasty and innovative and at that deeper level, like you said, this, you know, beautiful self-care and nourishment. Mm -hmm. I've been on the receiving end. My friend Jess has gifted me um, some, you know, sometimes, and and I've given your stuff as gifts to other friends too, which I gave it to one friend who is not an herbalist and it just like blew her away. I mean, she's like like months afterwards, how cool it was. So yeah, they're wonderful for ourselves and they're wonderful gifts as well. Thank you, Rosalie. Yeah. Thank you for such a beautiful offering. Mm -hmm. Well, as the listeners know, I ask all my guests the same question for each season. And for season six, I decided to go to my newsletter herbal community and ask them what question do they think I should ask? And I got so many great replies. And so it was a really hard choice to choose. Um, but a shout out to Laura and Anne Marie for choosing or for both asking a similar question that I ultimately chose. And both of them are receiving a signed copy of one of my books. And thank you to everyone who submitted questions. Some of those questions I'm holding on to for later because there were really great ones. So the question for season six that I asked to you, my dear friend Leslie, is herbs give us so much. How do you like to give back? to the plants? I was super excited to hear this question because I feel like this is maybe the mission of me teaching. Um, I So to be honest, when I saw this question and I knew you were in season six, that yeah. was part of, I was like, that'll be a perfect question. I was super excited. Um, yeah, to give back, I feel like, I don't know, it's just like plants do, they give us so much and the ability to give back is like such an honor really to be able to try to to return the favor. So I think as humans, we have the gift of a voice that other humans can hear. And we have the gift of hands and feet. And so we can utilize those um, to help out plants. I think really to like kind of go back, like thinking about it this way of like, you know, when we have a patch of nettles that we harvest, when we go out and that's our food and we go there year after year and like we really develop a relationship with that place or Oregon grape root. Like I go there and I've healed some infections with my son from that patch. Like I feel really invested to that place. Like I feel really at home in that place and I feel really appreciative of that place of what that place has offered. And um, 
you know, so I want, I want to protect that place. Like if that place was in danger of like logging, which has happened right by my house or like blackberries are encroaching, like I'm going to get up and speak about it. Like my heart is there. Like that's Mm -hmm. part of my livelihood. And also, you know, if the blackberries are there, like I want to clear those out and help the native plants growing there. So those are some gifts that we have. And then, you know, that we can offer back. And then also just like getting to know that place, like knowing like there's this devil's club patch that we've been going to with my class for probably a decade. It's a really sensitive plant for a lot of reasons. And so, you know, we're pretty careful in that area, but it's been amazing to be there for 10 years. So we harvest the stalks that fall, not the roots. And so we harvest the stalks that are like in between, they'll root down when they hit the ground. And so we'll harvest the stem in between those two places. And then if you get a little root where it's rerooted, we actually take that and we'll plant it on the perimeter of the patch. And we've actually gone and planted like other places upstream. And in that 10 years, the patch has grown like probably times five Hmm. and how big it is, like just going back. here. So it's like really amazing, you know, like so if you get to know the plants and you know, like how to disperse the seed or how to, you know, propagate and grow them in other places like that's one gift that we can give and I also just want to say that like when we go to those places we can ask questions of the plants like like how can I help you (laughs) and it might seem kind of woo or funny at first I I know it did to me when I first started with plants like I was like you know people talk about that they can hear plants speak and I was like well I don't have that gift (laughs) like I don't I don't hear plants talk. Um, But now that I've been working with plants for over 20 years, I'm like, oh, oh, they do. Like I just start thinking things or some funny little song comes into my head that's like giving me guidance. Like my brain just conjured it up somehow or um, Mm. it's kind of remarkable. But I think just asking, how can I be of service? Like it opens up a dialogue and that's really powerful. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's really beautiful. I like that you have these concrete ways that you're helping plants and, you know, especially these specific plants that have a place in your heart and that you have a deep relationship with. But I really appreciate that idea of that we don't always know and being there for the dialogue and being open is mm-hmm. an important part of the process. Mm-hmm. Totally. Hmm. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us, Leslie. It's wonderful to hang out with you and chat about herbs. And I'm just so appreciative that that you said yes and that we got this time together. So thank you. I'm so grateful, Rosalie. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the link in the video description to get free access to Leslie's Chamomile Cardamom Bitters Recipe Card. Also available are the complete show notes, including the transcript. You can also find Leslie at www.wildroot.etsy.com. If you enjoyed this interview, then before you go, be sure to click the subscribe button so you'll be the first to get my new videos, including interviews like this. I'd also love to hear your comments about this interview and this lovely, lovely herb. I deeply believe that this world needs more herbalists and plant-centered folks. I'm so glad that you're here as part of this herbal community. Have a beautiful day.